Hello, this is Jeff. I'm an indie game developer who creates story-rich games that scare people. Or at least, I try to. This is a devlog about a new horror game I'm making. I want to take a few minutes to look at what I've accomplished over the past week. So here is the idea for this game. Your job is to take care of these things. If you don't, there will be severe consequences for you and for others. The first thing I worked on this week was an interaction prompt. It's pretty important to do this so that people aren't confused and run around helplessly trying to figure out what objects they can do things with. I've thought about not having this in games, but it's frankly expected and it makes for a better experience. Next, I added footstep sounds and head bobbing as you move around. I find that this adds a touch of realism as long as you don't get carried away. And of course, like most of the games I make, you need to be able to run away from things. Note how the speed of the sound increases as you're running. I want some of the things you have to do in this game to be difficult. So I added crouching and crawling this week so you can use it to get into secret areas. And every good horror game needs a flashlight. I like how when you move it around, it lags a little bit. It feels just a little bit more real. It also uses a texture based on a real flashlight. I'll probably add battery drain to this so that it makes your job a little bit harder. Most of my time this week was spent working on a beacon. In the control room, there's a status indicator telling you if it's on or off. If it's off, you have to go fix it. To do that, you have to go outside. This is just a test level. In the actual game, you'll have to hike a good distance to the tower so you can fix the beacon. Note how when you're walking on grass, it sounds like grass. And when walking on metal, it sounds like metal. Again, a few little touches to add to the realism. In the tower, there's a switch you can use to turn the beacon on or off. Of course, it's broken. You'll have to figure out what to do to fix it. For now, I just have you click on the control panel and that does fix it. Now when you click the switch, it turns the beacon light on and the status updates to show it in the tower and in the control room. If you watch my last uh, vlog, you may have noticed I've added landscape, grass, and trees. This is, like I said, a test level and test environment, but I want to get started on figuring out what I want the game to look like, and the environment plays a big part in that. So far, performance is pretty good, even with Unreal 5's Lumen enabled and all its fanciness. The game is currently locked to 60 frames per second, and it maintains that really well. It uses 50 to 60% of the GPU, which is not bad. Okay, that's enough for this week. I hope you're enjoying these if you're following along. Let me know if there's something else you want to know about. See you next time.